Already before the corona pandemic, mammoth changes have been happening across trading desks given the onset of new technologies. In this week's The Big Conversation, we look at the future of trading. Hi everybody, I'm Louisa Boyerson and welcome to this week's The Big Conversation. While traders have been adapting to automation and a world of AI for a long time, smart platforms, algorithms, quant trade mechanisms, and while traders have been forced to develop new abilities to compete, the onset of COVID-19 has just served to speed up many of these ongoing shifts. To examine the changing environment of trading, Refinitiv and Greenwich Associates teamed up in a three-part series called The Future of Trading. In their first part of the report, they look at the effect of emerging technologies on ensuring market efficiency and examine where the greatest impact will come from. I spoke to a number of market luminaries and started by asking, how is the future of trading being disrupted? Machine-ready data can be used for, certainly with AI, can be certainly used with ML, but it's really to be able to link the data together whether you're looking at real-time data, whether you're looking at reference data, whether you're looking at end of day or tick history data, whether you're looking at any other types of content that is being created anywhere along the way, customers need to be able to bring that data together so they can actually run their algorithms to be able, they need to discover it. And then the AI and the ML kick in when they can actually run all the different mathematical analysis that they want to be able to run once they've been able to see where those patterns start to come together. And it is growing so much more to the, as an example, you know, recently we put our entire time series data onto the cloud, which is basically petabytes of data. And now customers, instead of running six months of analysis are now running 30 years of analysis. And they're going back to, you know, what happened in 9-11 and looking at those as correlations to what's happened with COVID. It's, you know, and now really, the technology is allowing to give people the ideas to bring together what their ideas were, but to actually be able to execute them with the technology now. You know, I think uh, the big trend that uh, we've seen um, ongoing, um, especially on the buy side, and it will continue to disrupt the business and in a good way is really the working from home and access to, you know, the trading tools and the portfolio management tools from home. So, You know, we uh, worked on a piece of the future of trading uh, with Greenwich uh, prior to the COVID crisis. Um, And, you know, we saw that the enterprise systems were moving to the cloud. That was a trend um, that more and more people needed to, and by people, I mean, you know, people in the industry, traders and, and portfolio managers needed to have access to these tools on the go, whereas it's on their mobile or um, or, or tablet or, or PCs. And, you know, with the COVID-19 crisis happening and everybody switching from the trading floors to working from home in, in, a, in a pretty orderly fashion, I have to say, um, I think that trend is here to stay. And, and you know, I don't see that going any, away anytime now. Um, so, you know, and, and that can be said both on the buy side and the sell side, right? I mean, the buy side always had a leg up, if you will, in, in the working from home environment versus the sell side. Um, I don't think anybody could, could have um, seen, you know, traders from the sell side leaving the, the trading floor anytime soon uh, in what we thought was, you know, the, the, the near future. Um, and the crisis has brought that forward. Um, and that's, that's something that we see staying as, as in any other industry. What do you think the important element will be to make working from home sustainable? Well, that's a great question. I think, you know, what, what is going to be um, key is really rather than a remote access to your tools back in the office and some slowness that can be seen when you do so is really, you know, the ability for our clients um, to trade, to see positions, to have the two interconnected from home. Um, so, you know, we're, we're uh, in a good place at Refinitiv where, you know, our OMS, AlphaDesk and our EMS re- ready, as well as our um, d- data monitor um, icon are all on, on the cloud, right? They're all SaaS based. So our clients have access to it on their desktop at home. 
just as they would in the office. And that will be key for their success uh, in the future. Um, so having access to these tools and that data from home is going to be key. And also having the interoperability between these tools is going to be key. And I mean, if we learn anything from um, the recent crisis that we went through and that we're in, in many ways still going through, you know, with volatility going, going through the roof, was that, you know, our clients, whether they're trader or portfolio managers, really need the two systems to work together, um, EMS and, and, and OMS, so that, you know, they can make sure that compliance and risk is taken care of uh, when they trade and that, you know, their positions um, and, you know, their portfolios are updated real time uh, when, when they trade as well. So it goes back and forth between the two. Trader can step in as a PM. PM can step in as a trader. Do you think the day trader poses a threat to the institutional trader? It's a good question. I mean, as an institutional trader, it's our job to understand the markets, right? And, and understanding the markets means we have to understand all the players that are playing in these stocks. So as an institutional trader, I need to understand the day traders and what that means for stocks. And for instance, you know, there are some stocks that uh, have high short interest. And I know that, you know, this has been one of the highest yielding strategies for the last couple of years is buying the heavily, most heavily shorted stocks and being short or underinvested in the, uh, the, the most heavily owned and, and least shorted names. This is a, a documented uh, strategy that's worked really well. So, you know, I know that the, the day traders target that. That's one of their, their strategies is, is, you know, especially on earnings. We saw um, BP uh, released earnings the other day and, you know, and they were hardly good earnings and they were bad, you know, if, uh, on the other end of coin, they were, they were pretty bad, but yet the stock was up. So there's a lot of things that are occurring in the markets that are not normal trading behaviors from what we've seen for the last 20, 30 years. So do they cause, you know, pose a threat? I don't, I don't see a direct threat, but it's something that we as institutional traders need to know, we need to realize, we have to factor that in into decision making. Look at the way Tesla has been trading over the last uh, several months. It's it's incredible. And there's a lot of, you know, people call them games that are going on in the options market. And, you know, they're not necessarily games. I mean, although some of that does exist, but it's a lot of the, the, the day traders that can't buy Tesla because of its high stock price, but they can buy calls. They can buy out of the money calls. So you have an enormous flux of, of traders that are using calls to be, you know, to, to be a proxy for, for owning the stock. Um, another thing is, in another, just one more uh, point is, is that you look at the current equity put call ratios. I mean, they're just, they're astounding. Um, you know, the number of calls versus puts uh, that, that are being purchased. And a lot of this is the, uh, the day traders playing in these names. We've seen customers have to change how they're running their operations. You know, they've had to set up their traders in home. And but more importantly, I think the bigger change is what everybody's been looking to do is the move to the cloud and to be able to leverage that technology more and more and more. So we're seeing customers, you know, quickly as they can take advantage of the ubiquitous systems that are available anywhere at any time and be able to really take advantage of what the cloud gives them, which is the ability to get to fast processing and inexpensive storage to be able to run their analytics. And the biggest difference that you see trading from home versus trading, for example, in, in the office is what? Um, well, the irony over the last, you know, when first COVID hit, we saw record breaking numbers. So everybody's at home. So what's the difference? It was kind of nothing. I mean, when you really look upon it that way, the markets were still moving. Everything was still being executed. Um, frankly, we're actually seeing even a push that we actually need more capacity to be able to do it. So 
where, where one is physically located, we've now proved it doesn't matter. In the second part of the report, the authors argue that it's not just the value of data that's key. You also need to identify what to do with all the data, how to best utilize it. Large market data collectors will only become more important also to traders. With 85% of those surveyed stating that they plan to increase spending on data management, the data takeaway in the report is clear. Everyone needs a data strategy. So are data strategies in place, though? I think many have their strategies in place. I think many are looking to continually to update their strategies. And so because having it where you want to be and where they are today, I think many customers are looking at all the new tools and technology that are now available. And, you know, they come to, they're coming to me now to look for more data and more information and equally important to make that data very easy to use. It's what we call sort of trade ready data because the analysis you have to do these days is so significant to be able to back test and run those analytics through and through. Do you think there's such a thing as a saturation point with regards to data? Not yet. Um, and uh, I would have said yes to that two, three years ago because customers had challenges with having enough CPU and compute power in their own data centers. Now with cloud and the ability to get to this, um, you know, get to the storage and get to the compute power, it really comes down to is, is how much money do you want to spend running the analysis and doing that? And I think we're seeing a lot of customers making that investment every day to be able to do that. The playing field is very skewed to the firms that have the most resources. You know, how we get around it and how we are able to compete in the data realm is that, you know, we use some of the third party research services and they are, you know, third party data scrapers, third party um, data collectors. And, you know, we're able to uh, get that data and, and, and hopefully compete. But yeah, the, the playing field's very skewed. And I feel like, you know, people are, you know, some people are really struggling to compete in that realm. And other people have been playing in that realm for, for years now and have been part of that entire sea change towards more data driven, AI driven uh, um, uh, stock decisions. In the final part of the report, Refinitiv and Greenwich Associates conclude that it's a myth that machines will take over and that the future of trading really will be about a seamless union of humans and machines with roles and room for both. According to their research, there will be new opportunities for top quality talent as human intuition and decision making will be prevalent alongside advanced AI and data analytics. They also find that we'll be seeing more of a shift favoring those with backgrounds in, for an example, computer science, quant, data science or programming, as opposed to those with finance degrees. I asked our market participants, if data is becoming so important, what are the changes in skill sets that you look for in traders? Once again, going back to that, you know, that paper that we did with Greenwich, um, it is very clear um, that engineers, computer computer scientists, computer programmer, and data scientists are areas where the financial industry, um, whether on the idea generation side and the trading side, are looking to beef up. Um, and that's true both on the buy side and the sell side. So really, the trader of tomorrow ideally will be able to understand big data, um, uh, probably understand the tools to ingest that big data, such as uh, augmented intelligence, uh, machine learning, and be able to code in Python. Uh, we see these trends, um, and, and it's definitely growing. What I've done to, to remain relevant and, and, and uh, you know, make myself as useful as I can to the, the firm is step back a little bit and have a little bit bigger time horizon. So. For instance, if I'm uh, buying or, or selling a stock, you know, I do a little bit more uh, technical an analysis on it. I've been doing technical analysis my whole career, but I 
I pick, uh, I'm, I'm more involved in picking spots. So for instance, if I feel like a stock, you know, that we're looking to buy, that I'm going to get a better chance to buy it in the next two, three days, four days, you know, I will hold off, you know, I will voice this to the portfolio manager and tell him my reasons why I feel like we can, we can buy it cheaper in the, the next few days. So, and, and that's where my job's morphed more into is, is looking at shorter time frames than, um, than, than a week, but a lot longer time frame than just the particular day that I get the order and trying to maximize uh, buying or selling the stock. We touched a little bit earlier about machine learning and AI and how those things are changing those sort of core technologies. But it really, what we're seeing that one of the biggest drivers is sort of pure analytics and getting data ready analytics to our customers so that they can make decisions better. With, with some of the new cloud technology that's come out with being able to bring the data together and make it very useful for a customer, we're now in the ability to be able to publish analytics out to our customers on an ad needed basis. That helps them in things where it'd be pre-trade analytics in terms of you know pre-trade VWAP, pre-trade analytics, but also in the post-trade side of it. We've seen analytics being a big part of post-trade, but how do we actually help them bring that together in a pre-trade analysis is really becoming a major change that we can now bring to those customers and once again, help them make those better decisions. We like to think of the future of trading as smarter trading. And one of the findings from the Refinitiv Greenwich Associates research was that by, quote, freeing up about 20 to 25 percent of capacity from manual processing means that portfolio managers, analysts and brokers, they'll have more time to generate ideas and work with clients, end of quote. So between industry professionals, technology and clients, that might just mean a win-win-win for all. Regardless of advances in technology and process, it's clear that above all, data is key. And you can now get the big conversation from Refinitiv as a flash update on your Alexa device or Google Assistant. And if you want to know more about how to download it to your smart speaker, please go to refinitiv.com forward slash flash briefing.